Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Force of Will 101 Deck Tech Series. My name is Chris, and today we're going to be talking about uh, my Little Red, the True Fairy Tale, Crimson Girl in the Sky, Oz list that I have named Follow the Yellow Brick Road. Uh, this deck has seen a lot of changes over the weeks since I first uh, played it on Lackey CCG. Um, there's a video in our on our channel that you can see with that one. But uh, as of right now, this deck is running three colors, red, white, and green. So fire, light, and wind, with wind being the primary, obviously, with uh, Crimson Girl in the Sky. So let's talk about Crimson Girl real quick. Uh, her activate, she has two options to J-activate. You can pay zero if uh, you've played a Refarth Castle in Heaven on the same turn. Or you can play two wind and one colorless. So... Even if you have to pay the two in one color, it's not too bad. Uh, let's flip her over real quick. Uh, to her J Ruler side, she has 800 attack, 1000 defense, Little Red, the true fairy tale. She is a fairy tale slash ancient. Um, she has three continuous effects. Her first one says she can't be targeted by fire or darkness spells or card abilities. So pretty good at taking down cards like thunder uh, or... Duels of Truth, things like that. Uh, pretty solid. Second ability says if a spell or ability would increase the attack and defense, attack or defense, excuse me, uh, of Resonators you control, it would increase double that much. Uh, pretty solid, as you'll see with the cards that I'm going to talk about. Uh, and then, on the opposite end of that, if a spell or ability would decrease the attack and defense of Resonators you control, it decreases zero instead. So, really solid card, really fun to make decks with, but she fits really well with the Oz. And I know it's a little dark in that corner, guys. Sorry about that, but um, I wanted to use as much natural lighting as possible today. So, to start things off, we're going to talk about the stones. Uh, being a wind, fire, light deck, we do have four of the gusting skies, the wind, light, dual stone. We have four of the um, Blasting Waves, the Wind Fire Dual Stone, and then we have two True Magic Stones. We have Feath Sing and we have Almerius Levitating. So both of these stones are really good in their own way. Feath Sing uh, gives something untargetable by spells, not abilities. That's important to remember, but it can hit, uh, Feasting's ability can target J rulers, so, you know, you get the bonus of that while losing the a whole, uh, immune to abilities, uh, text. Almerius, while not the greatest card to hit on turn one, um, does have the ability to give something flying by tapping it and paying one light, so, uh, it really has a lot of OTK potential just to get there once you have a really pumped up dude. Uh, both are really good in this deck. Um, I haven't had too many problems with Almerius on turn one because usually I'll have like a Tinkerbell or something in my hand, anyways. So, um, what else? All right, let's move on to the spells list. Uh, this deck runs quite a few spells. Uh, we'll start off with the uh, kind of like the staple spells for Thunder. Okay, so we have four Thunder. Uh, we're running red in this deck, so we might as well uh, have those Thunders main board. Um, most of the Thunder is just the splash, or excuse me, most of the red in this deck is just a splash for cards like Thunder. Um, we don't actually run any fire resonators, so, but Thunder is a great card to have in your arsenal. Then we have three of the Zeke's, the Ancient Magic. Um, this card gets significantly better when you have. Uh, Little Red as your ruler. Zeke's uh, has four different abilities. Um, I'm not going to go through all four because most of you have already uh, heard of the abilities, but when you have Little Red, you can use all four instead of one. So normally a really good card, Crimson Girl slash Little Red makes it an amazing card. Uh, we have three Oz's Magic. Oz's Magic costs one. Uh, puts an achievement counter on up to two target resonators, uh, and if you control Oz the Great Wizard, you can draw a card. Uh, Oz the Great Wizard resonator can search for Oz's magic and play it for free. Um, so this card is just really, really good. It's good, 
you know, it's good if you just play it from your hand. It's really good if you search for it with odds. So I would recommend throwing these back in a mulligan if you do draw them. Uh, then we go on to field editions. Uh, we have two of the Realm of Evolution, two of the Refarth Castle in Heaven, and two of Realm of Pure Spirits. Now let's talk about this for a second. Uh, Realm of Evolution and Refarth both buff your guys. Um, Realm of Evolution buffs Fairy Tales, and Realm, uh, Refarth buffs everything. Now, before the rule change, where uh, with the field editions, I would only run two of each of these, which is you, you're seeing right now. The rule change, which allows you to have multiple copies of the same field, might change that for me, especially with Refarth, because Refarth's banish ability allows you to give something plus 400, plus 400 until end of turn. Um, that can be really insane when you consider the doubling effect of uh, Little Red the True Fairy Tales. So be, having two of these on the field and banishing both of them to be able to give one of your resonators plus 1600, plus 1600, uh, yeah, it just can get super nutty super quick. Um, Realm of Evolution also can be banished, to uh, and that one lets you search for a fairy tale. So solid, uh, solid array of field editions. This one uh, kind of just goes again, like, because kind of like Dracula hate and other, you know, hard removal hate. And then lastly, in the spells category, we have two of the Silver Stake. Now, Silver Stake's a really interesting card um, because it does give plus 400, plus 400, and immunity to vampires. But um, it, uh, it also has this bottom ability that says pay one, return this card to its owner's hand. Now, that can be really useful with the Heartless Tin Man. Um, the Heartless Tin Man gets an achievement counter every time an addition, whether it's an addition resonator or an addition field, uh, whenever one of those is put into play on your side of the field. So, you you know, you, you equip Heartless Tin Man with Silver Stake. He gets a counter. So it goes to one. Then you pay one to bring Silver Stake back. That counter doesn't go anywhere. It stays there. Pay one to play it again. goes into two. Yeah, you know, so forth, so forth, until you can really just make it out of control. And with the doubling ability, this is a plus 800, plus 800 for one mana. Um, pretty good. So, we have the two silver stakes. I uh, thought about running more. I still might. Um, this deck, obviously, as you can tell, <laughs> is in flux a lot for me. I'm, I'm changing it a lot. And I would encourage you to do the same. Please don't uh, just run an exact list if you decided to run this Aztec, make it your own a little bit. Let me know what the changes are. I'd be really interested to see what you did and how successful it was for you. Uh, you can always contact us uh, on Facebook or at ggforceofwill at gmail.com. Anyways, after that shameless plug, let's talk about the Resonators. Uh, we have four of the Brainless Scarecrow. Uh, I'm going to talk about all of the achievement counter cards at once. Four of the Heartless Tin Man which is the uh, kind of like the heart and soul of this deck, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, and then three Cowardly Lion. I did have to cut one to um, get some other stuff in here that I wanted to. I think that's okay to cut one of these because this is probably the worst one in my opinion. Uh, you do have to get battle damage to go through to your opponent's face for it to actually get an achievement counter. Um, the Scarecrow is good because it automatically gets a counter when it's in the, when it gets put into the field as long as you have one of these other two ones out. So it's, I mean, unless you're desperate, you're always going to start this one with an achievement counter. Uh, and the Tin Man is just super good. So that that is the achievement counter lineup. 11 cards total. Uh, out of a 40 card deck means you should probably start with what you need almost every game. Uh, to Glinda, the fairy. Um, just a solid card that gives something unblockable, which is even better than flying. Um, and it has a lot of OTK potential with the added benefit of being able to cancel a normal spell in the right conditions. Um, three of the Oz the Great Wizard. Talked about this briefly when I was talking about Oz the Magic. Um, 600, 600, solid body for a three drop. Um, maybe a little below, but... Uh, it, it allows you to search your deck for a spell that costs exactly one, and if it's Oz's Magic, you can play it for free. Um, 
uh, it's really good and if you know for some reason you don't need to search for an Oz's magic you can still go find a thunder or a sideboard of dual truth things like that so Oz uh, great wizard really good and then for Tinkerbell the spirit uh, Tinkerbell is just really solid in these Crimson Girl decks because uh, Tinkerbell does get plus 200 plus 200 for every fairy, fairy tale on the cre uh, on the board but with Little Red Flipped she gets plus 400 plus 400 for every tale, fairy tale on the board so I mean I've had games where uh, with all the other field buffs and things like that uh, I've had a 4,000 4,000 Tinkerbell um, and that's because this deck kind of just floods the board with all its little dudes um, and then uses one of them to swing through for game. Uh, so Tinkerbell, super good, especially because all of the um, achievement counter resonators are fairy tales. And then finally, uh, to really hate on the uh, hard removal is Aesop the Prince's Tutor, two of. Uh, Aesop makes it so that all your fairy tales can't be targeted by spells or abilities. Um, and, you know, you, usually that's pretty good, but your opponent can just thunder uh, Aesop and get on with hating on your fairy tales um, but with the addition of uh, if I can find it here with the addition of realm of pure spirits uh, that makes it much much harder for them to get at your stuff uh, realm of pure spirits uh, makes everything that's recovered uh, untargetable and so you just never ever swing with ASAP you just leave them like that and uh, this prevents ASAP from being targeted and ASAP prevents all your fairy tales from being targeted so double coverage and it's super annoying super super annoying to play against so that's a great thing to have in the deck so that is the main deck um, pretty straightforward pretty consistent draw wise um, as this is a uh, counter based deck it's not you're gonna have some wacky games um, it's not gonna be the same every single time you play it uh, you're going to have some different strategies based on what counters you can get on your dudes. But let's just talk about a couple sideboard options real quick. This is not my set sideboard, disclaimer alert. Um, we're just going to talk about some options you could throw in. Uh, so I've seen some people run Law of Silence just to you know be able to have that extra turn. Uh, also so that your opponent can't respond. You can play it on your turn and your opponent can't respond to anything that you do. Uh, pretty solid. Uh, additional silver stakes I've, uh, are pretty decent in the sideboard. One additional realm of pure spirits. Uh, Dream of Juliet in the sideboard is really good. Probably a two or three of in the sideboard. Uh, maybe like an Emperor's New Clothes uh, just for that addition, uh, the Resonator edition hate. Uh, if you're playing like against like a Three Musketeers or something. Rapid Decay to out aggro other aggro decks. Uh, Zeke's, the fourth one, I definitely would like in my sideboard. Another ASAP when you feel like you're really under pressure from hard removal. Uh, Duel of Truth uh, for when you're facing down some big guys, like some Mephistopheles or something like that. Uh, you can pump up one of your guys pretty easily and just take it out. Take the 500 damage from Mephistopheles, but anyways, I mean, it's still pretty good. Uh, you can also take out a J Ruler fairly easily uh, because most of the time your achievement counter cards or Tinkerbell will be much stronger than your opponent's J Ruler. Um, and anything else I'm missing here? No, it looks like most of the sideboard options I would consider for this deck. Um, there's, I mean, obviously there's infinitely more based on your local meta. Uh, I would not recommend ever copying, straight copying a sideboard from any video you see online, just because your meta is going to be different than the meta that whoever created the video is, uh, and myself included. So uh, this has been a quick profile of my uh, Yellow Brick Road. Oz deck. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you have deck ideas that you would like to see on one of mine and Matt's live shows, uh, please send us an email at ggforceofwill at gmail.com. And if you have not joined us on the Facebook page uh, for the United States, please go find us. It is Force of Will TCG US on Facebook. Uh, as always, thanks so much for watching. We always appreciate your comments, your likes, and your subscriptions. We try to respond to as many comments as we can, as quickly as we can. Uh, so, this has been another episode of Force of Will 101 Deck Tech Series. My name is Chris, and I will see you on the next one.
Evan on the same turn, or you can play two wind and one colorless. So even if you have to pay the two wind, one colorless, not too bad. Uh, let's flip her over real quick. Uh, to her J ruler side, she has 800 attack, 1000 defense, little red, the true fairy tale. She is a fairy tale slash ancient. Um, she has three continuous effects. Her first one says she can't be targeted by fire or darkness spells or card abilities. So pretty good at taking down cards like thunder uh, or duels of truth, things like that. Uh, pretty solid. Second ability says if a spell or ability would increase the attack and defense, attack or defense, excuse me, uh, of resonators you control, it would increase double that much. Uh, pretty solid, as you'll see with the cards that I'm going to talk about. Uh, and then, on the opposite end of that, if a spell or ability would decrease the attack or defense of resonators you control, it decreases zero instead. So, really solid card, really fun to make decks with, but she fits really well with the odds. We have three of the Zeke's, the Ancient Magic. Um, this card gets significantly better when you have uh, Little Red as your ruler. Zeke's uh, has four different abilities. Um, I'm not going to go through all four because most of you have already uh, heard of the abilities, but when you have Little Red you can use all four instead of one. So normally a really good card, Crimson Girl slash Little Red makes it an amazing card. Uh, we have three Oz's Magic. Oz's Magic costs one, uh, puts an achievement counter on up to two target resonators, uh, and if you control Oz the Great Wizard, you can draw a card. Uh, Oz the Great Wizard resonator can search for Oz's Magic and play it for free. Um, so this card is just really, really good. It's good, you know, it's good if you just play it from your hand. It's really good if you search for it with Oz, so I would recommend throwing these back in a mulligan if you do draw them. Uh, then we go on to field editions. Uh, we have two. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Force of Will 101 Deck Tech Series. My name is Chris, and today we're going to be talking about uh, my Little Red, the True Fairy Tale, Crimson Girl in the Sky, Oz list that I have named Follow the Yellow Brick Road. Uh, this deck has seen a lot of changes over the weeks since I first uh, played it on Lackey CCG. Um, there's a video in our on our channel that you can see with that one. But uh, as of right now, this deck is running three colors, red, white, and green, so fire, light, and wind with wind being the primary, obviously, with uh, Crimson Girl in the Sky. So let's talk about Crimson Girl real quick. Uh, her activate, she has two options to J-activate. You can pay zero if uh, you've played a Refarth Castle and has, and I know it's a little dark in that corner, guys. Sorry about that, but um, I wanted to use as much natural lighting as possible today. So to start things off, we're gonna talk about the stones. Uh, being a wind, fire, light, deck we do have four of the gusting skies the wind light dual stone we have four of the um, blasting waves the wind fire dual stone and then we have two true magic stones we have feath sing and we have almirius levitating so both of these stones are really good in their own way Feet Sing uh, gives something untargetable by spells, not abilities, that's important to remember, but it can hit, uh, Feet Sing's ability can target J rulers, so you know, you get the bonus of that while losing the uh, whole uh, immune to abilities uh, text. Almerius, while not the greatest card to hit on turn one, um, does have the ability to give something flying by tapping it and paying one light. So uh, it really has a lot of OTK potential just to get there once you have a really pumped up dude. Uh, both are really good in this deck. Um, I haven't had too many problems with Almerius on turn one because usually I'll have like a Tinkerbell or something in my hand anyway. So. Um, what else? All right, let's move on to the spells list. Uh, this deck runs quite a few spells. Uh, we'll start off 
with the uh, kind of like the staple spells for thunder okay so we have four thunder uh, we're running red in this deck so we might as well uh, have those thunders main board um, most of the thunder is just the splash or excuse me most of the red in this deck is just a splash for cards like thunder um, we don't actually run any fire resonators so but thunder is a great card to have in your arsenal then we